in a dark world filled with deceit. One united voice is crying out. Revealing the truth of God's word. It's time to expose the hidden truth. And unravel the lies. While we're living beyond Satan's little season. With Sister Crystal and Brother Phil. Welcome to Living Beyond Satan's Little Season Show. We're your hosts, Sister Crystal, Brother Phil. The topic today, hell. What is it? I had a previous show on hell called The Hell Deception, but I felt like I could probably do one more show on hell, exactly what this place is. When you actually do the deep dive research of what the Bible states this place is, it's not what 99.9% of people think it is. But people just don't read their Bibles. And this is what we're going to do today. We're going to go deep into the Word of God, show you... The Bible gives you everything you need to know to discover what these things are it, that, that we're looking into. All you have to do is do the research, but people just just assume that they just trust their preacher, trust well, their teacher, they yeah. trust their Bible pastors. They're just trusting people to tell them what this place is. And I'm going to show you, and I'm going to, you're going to read, I want you to get your Bibles out today and read all these scriptures. You know, if you have to put, pause the show just to read the scripture for yourself, do it. One of the things I'm discovering is that people just don't really read their Bible and the clues of the Bible and the breadcrumbs of the Bible take us and give us the clues we need to know these things. Okay. So that's the problem that we have. A lot of the foundational thought that we have on hell has been miscued through generations in the church and people are putting their own spin on what the hell they think hell is. And they've made it this dark, gloomy place. Some people wake up having a dream because they saw a scary movie and it was in their own imagination of what hell is like. Or you hear these stories. This is what gets me. You hear more people having afterlife experience about going to heaven, but there are still some that are like, almost like they get a glimpse of what hell is. Maybe, maybe not. But the idea is it isn't the place you want to go. Well, I think it's a figment of a lot of people's imagination, honestly. One thing I'm discovering is a lot of this thing we think that the Bible teaches about, it isn't. See, right now, most of the churches are stuck on this idea of a heaven-hell paradigm. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're either... When you die, you're going to go to heaven or you're going to die and you're going to burn in hell for all eternity. That's where the majority of churches are at now. And this is a net. And the reason why this is taught and why it's such a great teaching in the church is it allows you to it allows a church to control everybody. Well, it's a fear tactic for yeah. one. It's two camps. You're either going in the one or you're going in the other. There is a, dis, a distinct position that you have to live rightly to live again. So you, if you're not living rightly, you are going to have punishment to pay. To what extent that punishment is, you have to read the Word of God. Okay, first thing we need to understand about hell is what's going to happen to everybody after they die. And most people don't know this because they don't really read their Bibles, but the Bible teaches that every single person on earth, whether you're good, bad, righteous, wicked, however you are, Everyone is going to get a resurrection when they when they die. And that is the fairness of God. That makes, when you brought that up in a few shows, quite a few shows ago, everyone will be resurrected. That was a kind of a mind blower for me. Because then that means no one is exempt. You know, no one, you think, oh, only the, re only the good are going to be resurrected. No, God looks at everyone's life as valuable and how you live it and... Everyone will have, I guess, meet their maker, so to speak. And we're going to read the passage of scripture right now. I've done this on another show called The Resurrection of the Wicked. And we're going to go over those passages of scripture really quick to start out. Because it's the first thing you need to understand is that the wicked are going to get resurrected. Right. Along with the righteous. Right. Absolute fact in taught in our Bibles. How many churches teach that today? God shows no partiality. 
But how many churches teach this idea that everyone's going to get a resurrection after death? Mm. Even though it's clearly in our Bibles multiple places. <laughs> okay, first one's Daniel 12, 2. Why don't you go ahead and read that one? And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Here, it, it's really interesting. There's a resurrection of everybody, right? But there's a distinction between the resurrection of the righteous and the resurrection of the wicked. So here the righteous are going to be resurrected to what the Bible calls eternal life. If that's true then, but this is, but some to shame and everlasting contempt. So the, just to get an idea, well, if some people are going to be resurrected to eternal life, then they're, then the other people are not going to be resurrected to eternal life. Okay. I mean, I'm just, that, that would make the most sense because otherwise he would just say, everyone's going to get resurrected to eternal life. No, he said, some to ever, everlasting life, the righteous right. to everlasting life. And you right. find out from other places, the righteous people are going to get resurrected to eternal life. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ himself teaches this. This is Daniel that stated that one. Let's read Jesus Christ's words himself about this. <laughs> John 5, 28. Go ahead. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice. And come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. There you go. Resurrection right. of everybody. He even says here, all who are in the graves. In other words, he he was stating, a, 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 you know, basically this is a great white throne judgment. Right. And the great white throne judgment in Revelation 20 kind of explains this a little bit better. Right. But he's saying that there's a time coming when every single person is going to get resurrected. Some... To life, of course, here, you know, the Daniel passage says eternal life. So, right. see, that's why you read all these little passages of scripture here, and then you get all the details. You just kind of put them all together. So, Jesus says, some to resurrection of life, which is right. eternal life. That's right. what Daniel stated. And then those who have done evil, okay, so the wicked people, to resurrection. So, they're going to get a resurrection too. Right. It even states right. the word resurrection right there. So... They're going to get resurrected too. Right. To condemnation. Okay. So the difference between these two, I guess you could say camps, because there are camps, right? right? There's the resurrection to new life and the resurrection to condemnation. But remember the verse in New Testament says, There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Made Christ a part of your life, and he lives in you, or the Holy Spirit is in you, and you are walking with Christ in your life. You will not have to face condemnation after death right but if you are an unbelieving living by the flesh person who does not choose christ in your life when you die and you are resurrected you are going to be resurrected to condemnation or consequences to your actions i think it like that like as a kid you know we all got disciplined by our parents <laughs> some a little harsher than others because some deserved it god is no different he is a loving father. He doesn't show partiality. Everyone's going to get the same resurrection to the degree of how they lived. Those who are going to get resurrection to the everlasting life if they live rightly and had Jesus in their life. And he paid the cost of their sins. But those who had not called upon Jesus' name as the payment of their sins will have to face condemnation. Now we understand there's a distinction, okay? So not everyone, when they get a resurrection... As a matter of fact, I would have to say, even Jesus stated, the majority of the people, when they get resurrected. Because remember, Jesus said, few there be that find, you know, eternal life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because Jesus was asked one time, and I, I, I don't have time to get into it, but about, you know, how hard is it to gain eternal life? And he says, make every effort, because few there be that find it. Jesus right. even stated, there's only going to be a few people that are going to make eternal life. The vast majority of the people... Are going to are, are being deceived. They're not going to make it into eternal life scenario. And that does that blow your mind, though. I mean, how much is a few? I mean, I just kind of think you see a lot of people who claim to be Christians and well-meaning, and but really, what it boils down to is it's how are you living? How are you living each day for God? And is Jesus living in you? People overlook that. They think, oh, I'm a good person, or I, you know, I mean well, or whatever. It's it's all about. How you live and who is your who is your master? Okay, now let's read the last passage, and this is the early church teaching this. So you have 
Of course, the Old Testament prophet Daniel taught it. Jesus himself states this. Without a doubt, everyone will come up from their graves. <laughs> I mean, I, there's no... I, I, no one teaches this in our churches today. No. And what I'm trying to state here, it, and then the early church taught this in Acts chapter 20, right. 24. Let's go ahead and read that one. Verse 15, go ahead. I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept, that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. There you go. See, <laughs> distinction, every one of those three witnesses, a distinction of the resurrection. The problem is, is now we're to why are we getting into this? Because we're going to talk about hell here, right? Okay, because Jesus, God, of course, is going to resurrect the wicked to throw them into hell, right? Because <laughs> that's pretty much what everybody states, right? Well, that's what everyone thinks. It's like, okay, if they well, understand. God's going to put in the energy and effort to resurrect everybody just to throw them in the lake of fire for all eternity, so they can just burn in agony. Is that, that's where most people are at. Mm. Which doesn't really make sense to me, because why would you resurrect every single person just to go, okay, I'm going to resurrect you now that you're dead, and then now I'm going to just throw you uh, into this horrible place as a punishment for you. It's like, they were dead. Why would you even bother with the with the idea of a resurrection if, okay, just throw them in, into this hellfire and brimstone place Well, the, okay, right away? There are several miscommunicational thoughts on what hell and what happens. Some people, oh well, when you die, well, if you're not if you're a believer, you're gonna have eternal life. Then people who die who don't believe, they're gonna if they don't understand the whole concept of resurrection, that they're gonna basically have punishment. Okay, so to what extent that punishment is? But the thought is this: you're right. Why would God resurrect them? There is punishment to their lifestyle, their way they chose to live. So. What that punishment is, is what hell is. We're going to get to what hell really <laughs> is here at the end of this. Because I'm putting, I'm get, putting, I'm taking you on a journey of what God's doing here, okay? First thing he's doing is resurrecting everybody. Right. <laughs> Righteous and wicked. Now, now, I want to think about this for a second. Because, you know, God only gave the, the covenant, the law of, to Moses and the children of Israel. You know, if you were living on the other side of the world at the time, you had no clue what God's will was for you. Right. Think about this for a minute. Why would God judge people living on the other side of the world from where the children of Israel were at? They didn't have the law of God. They didn't know right from wrong. They had no clue about all this stuff. Yet God's going to, oh, I'm just going to throw them in this terrible lake because you didn't follow me. It's like, well, we didn't have your word. See, this is where every judgment is going to be a little bit different. See, we're going to be, everyone's going to get judged when they die. Some people who are righteous, of course, will get pardoned if we are Christ. But the other people then will go through a judgment. Now, the judgment's going to be based on what they've done. And, you know, some people are going to be judged more harshly than others. The Bible actually states this too. Now, I'm not going to get too much into that, but here I'm just going to show you what's going on here when it comes to this idea, this doctrine of hell or the lake of fire or whatever it is that people think is going to happen to you. In the afterlife, right. when you die and get resurrected. Now we know we're getting resurrected. We're getting resurrected over there, and now people are. What? Where are we going now? What right. are we going? What's going to happen to those wicked people now? Righteous people. Now we're going to go to Revelation chapter twenty-two. Okay, this is New Earth over there. This is what's going on over there. We're going to read a description of what's what's going on over on New Earth. In Revelation chapter 12, this is the last chapter of the entire Bible, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is where our future is. This is where we're going when we die and pass on from this place. Let's go ahead and read Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 through 5. Go ahead and read that. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Okay, so here you have this river or water of life coming through here. I haven't really done too much. I haven't really gone and done a show much on the river of life. I plan on doing one here pretty soon because the river of life is actually mentioned, believe it or not, in two other sources in our Bibles, in the Old Testament. It's prophesied in the Old Testament as well. And so that's how you know they're talking about New Earth when these Old Testament areas are talking about this place. That that Revelation, John, the John in Revelation is talking about. Right. Okay, but I don't have, we don't have time to get into that today. But here, it talks about 
from the throne in the middle of the street, there's this river that's flowing and this tree of life. Okay, this tree of life, and it's for it it produces fruit, 12 kinds of fruit, it says. It, but it yields its fruit every month. But the leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nations. Well, wait, wait, wait a minute now. I thought all these evil people now, and that nations is Gentiles or you know. So wait a minute. I thought all these evil people now were being thrown in the lake of fire for all eternity. Wait a minute. Why have these leaves heal the nations here if everyone's just thrown in the lake of fire? Well, the question too is, in that passage in the New Testament talks about talking about heaven or not really heaven, but the kingdom of God. That there'll be no more tears. There'll be no more pain, yeah. sorrow, disease. So. The healing of the nations isn't going to be for those who are the resurrected to eternal life, because we know there's no no disease, no death, no no, no pain, no suffering. So they're not going to be sick and suffering. So whatever healing is going to be happening, it's going to be for those who are not of the everlasting life mm -hmm. camp. Yeah, the there's two groups of people. The Bible is very clear. There's there's the, the those who will obtain eternal life. They'll receive eternal joy, peace, all that kind of good stuff. And then there's everyone else is going to be outside. And of course, they are going to receive the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. They're, in other words, God's trying to heal. Mm. Now, I want you to think about this. God's trying to heal the people who have been condemned. Wow. Th I want you to think about that one for a minute, because this is not what you, you hear people say when, you, when they talk about hell. No, you just hear them. Let's throw them in the lake of fire for eternity and let it burn there forever, <laughs> right? Because that's 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 the narrative you're getting in most of these churches these days. It's like punishment, you know, upon punishment upon punishment. Like that, but see, that's not love. Whatever punishment that is, see, God does everything in love. Right. So, you see, I'm just trying to get you to understand. Okay, things aren't as black and white as what you're saying, thinking here. Okay. It kind of sounds like they're going to be over there. Of course, they're going to be cast out. They're not going to be among the etern those of eternal life. So they're going to get mortal life again, obviously, because there's only going to be, there's going to be immortals over there getting eternal life. And then there's going to be the others, which are the majority of people that are going to, basically, it sounds to me like they need to be healed of sin and depravity in their life and all mm -hmm. that kind of good stuff. Now, Let's move on to Revelation 22, a little bit further on in the chapter, okay, to verse 14. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life, that they may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs and sorcerers and the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. Okay, so it kind of sounds here like the New Jerusalem there, okay? People are going to be coming to New Jerusalem. Now, it sounds to me like it says, blessed are those who have washed their robes. Now, this is interesting. So, wait a minute, wash their robes. I thought, you know, if you're righteous or whatever, you don't need to wash your robes. Well, it kind of sounds, okay, this is kind of what it sounds like here. It sort of sounds like people over there are, and what does washing robes mean? Washing their robe means that they're washing their robe in the blood of Jesus Christ. They're, they're trying to rep they're repenting of their sins. They're changing their ways. Okay. So you see, they have mortal life outside the city. Right. These people. Okay. But it kind of sounds like there's going to be people that are going to come to Jeru new Jerusalem and that they may have a right to the tree of life. See the tree of life. They have to eat of that tree in order to live you know, long life, th that they may enter the city. See, we know the righteous can enter in and out of the city, no problem, right? But here it kind of indicates that it's only the, the, the people that have been, of course, thrown out, they have to wash their robes to so, come into the city. Because we all know Jesus died to the cleansing of our sins and of our flesh. They still have to do that because they have not, they didn't accept him. So that's a necessary that they be cleansed by the blood of the lamb. Well, it, the way there's only one other place that talks about this washing of robes. Mm. And that's in actually Revelation chapter 7. I want to read this really quick. He says here in verse 14. Now, now if you read Revelation 7, it's kind of sounding like this is another vision. See, that's why John's visions, he, he goes, 
they're not in chronological order. He just sees a vision here, sees a vision there. He has all these ADD. visions, and he just writing them all down. But they're not really in chronological order. And so this vision here in Revelation seven here is essentially of the great white throne judgment. Right. And then he starts out in verse nine. He says, "After this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude." That no one could number from every nation, from every tribe and people and language, standing before the throne. Okay, so what does that sound like? That sounds to me like the great white throne judgment to me. Okay. And before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God. You know, all this. And you you go down a little bit here to verse 14. He said, I said to them, sir, you know, and he said, and he said to me, those are the ones that are coming out of the great tribulation. So there's this tribulation that we all know happened during this time that they were persecuted Christians. They, you know, barely survived. They, they were coming out of the tribulation, right? And it says they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Wow. Okay. So th- this is the other instance where you get this idea of the washing of the robes in the blood of the lamb. Right. In other words, they made themselves pure by getting, by essentially going through that great tribulation. So what the washing of robes really means is you're purifying yourself. Right. And and this is how, and we purify ourselves today. How do we do that? By, we don't have to go through the great tribulation, obviously. We're, we're beyond that now. But going through the deception of our age, this is what we're, we're trying to do. We're going through the deception of our age. And this is how we are washing our robes right now. We are washing our robes in the blood of Christ right now by enduring the deception wow. of this present age, which right. is an awesome thing. That's what these guys had to do, and that's why they were able to be in the presence of God. And they, they go, you, you, go, you go down there and says, "There should be no, no. They shall hunger no more. They shall thirst no more. The sun should not strike them nor scorch them." In other words, it's going to be a, a place of joy and happiness, and the springs of living water will be. So, in other words, they're going to the, the water of life and. Another vision of the great white throne judgment here and, and what's going on in New New Earth, or New Jerusalem. But you see, outside of the New Jerusalem, in that passage of Scripture, Revelation chapter 22, there's people that are still in rebel. There's a lot of people that are still in rebellion against God. Outside are the dogs, sorcerers, sexually immoral, the fornicators, all these other people. So there's, you know, this is New Earth here. So these people are out there doing all their wicked deeds, unrepentant people, okay? I'm just trying to explain to you, it doesn't sound to me like they're burning in agony and torture. No, they're just still in rebellion when there's some people, it says here, that are going to wash their robes and be allowed into the city. You know, (laughs) they wash the robe in the blood of Jesus. That's what they've done. And so they have the right to eat of the tree of life and live forever, Okay. They're going, in other words, they're repenting of their sins and they're right. going to have a, 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 have a chance to do that. Right. This doesn't sound like hellfire to me. I'm, I'm just putting this out there. This doesn't sound like, oh, they're, they're going to be burning in agony. No, no, it sounds to me like they're, God's wanting to heal these people. And the ones that allow the healing to happen, he's going to allow them into the city to eat from the tree of life. We're going to get to the part of what, what hell really is here in a moment. But let's go, ahead and read, go to Matthew chapter 25. This is another part of the great white throne judgment and i'm gonna there's a clue about where the wicked are gonna go here in this passage of scripture now go ahead and read matthew chapter five chapter 25 verse 31 when the son of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him then he will sit on the glorious throne before him will be gathered all the nations and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Okay, and we know these are all the dead from Revelation chapter 20 passage. So we know these are the dead people that are coming. And so he's separating. Okay, these are the, the righteous, the ones that are going to get eternal life from the other. See, that's why I love, if you combine all these passages that we're reading, you're understanding, okay, so the people that are on his right will gain eternal life. They're my people. They're the sheep. They're the good ones. Now, everyone else here, they're on the left, and they're essentially... Now, why would Christ even bother judging everyone? Just throw them all in the lake of fire in one place. See? No, no, there's going to be a separate judgment mm. for every individual person here going on, okay? 
some people more, more harshly than others, but you know, he puts them on the left-hand side. Now, we're going to go into what, what's going on here. A little bit down, he talks about these people that he put on the, the goats he put on the left. Now, this is the part I'm f- going to focus on here because what is going to happen to those people? Are, are they going to be thrown in the lake of fire? What's going to happen to them? Well, let's read what Jesus said, states a little bit later on this. Okay, Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Right. What happens to those people who are thrown... The, the goats that are thrown on the left, what happens to them? Go ahead. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Okay. That sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. You, they're going to be thrown into that eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Well, we know the fire that was prepared for the devil and his angels, because we know where the devil went. Right. See, the good thing, that's why you look at these little tiny clues Okay, now where's this fire that the devil was thrown into? Well, Revelation chapter 20 talks about where the devil was thrown. So we, and, and, and of course, John doesn't call it eternal fire. He, he calls it the lake of fire here. Okay, so now we're going to go to G- Revelation chapter 20 and John's account of where these wicked people went to. Okay, where, where, where the devil went to. And so we're, these wicked people are going to go to the same place that the devil went to. Okay, so go ahead and read Revelation chapter 20, start with verse 10 there. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet were. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Okay, so here you have the devil getting thrown into this lake of fire. So John calls this place a lake of fire. Jesus, of course, in, Re- in Matthew chapter 25, calls it this eternal fire. So it's a place that's just burning forever. Eternal fire just burning forever and all that kind of stuff, right? So same place. It's got to be the same place because the devil, we know, was he, the, the, that's where the wicked were going to be thrown is is into where the devil was going to get thrown. Okay. So I'm just trying to get is that. Okay, go ahead and continue on verse 11 there. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. From his presence, earth and sky fled away. And no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. And books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books, according to what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one of them, according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire, this is the second death, the lake of fire. Okay, did you hear what it said about the lake of fire? Now, see, so we know that this fire, that these people that place, that everyone is going to get thrown. Everyone that was wicked, that was left, was going to get thrown into the lake of fire. Okay, it's it's called, of course, Jesus calls it Gehenna fire or eternal fire. It's the same, all the same place, okay? But here, there's an interesting thing, that the lake of fire is called... The second death. Now, I want you to think about that one for a second, okay? Now, everyone goes through one death. We, we all die in our lives here, right? Okay? Because that's what it is. We, we all, we, we make it through our life, but one day we know we're not going to live forever and we're going to age and pass away and die and go to new earth. Okay, this is what, 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 we, what we're teaching here, right? So we are going to die and... We're going to have death, and we are going to go, and depending on you know, if we're righteous, we get eternal life. And that's the good news, okay? If we're wicked, we get thrown into a place that's called the lake of fire, or the, we're going to get put into a place called the second death. See, because remember, they're going to get resurrected, but not to eternal life, right? They're going to be resurrected to eternal shame. So they're not going. they're going to be mortals over there. They're not going to be immortals like us, you know, who n- don't neither marry nor are given in marriage. No, no, over there, now they they have to kind of they're having a, kind of a redo, except now they're in disgrace. Okay, they didn't make it. They didn't they, they didn't make the cut of being uh, uh, among the the immortals. Right, like we're trying to become. Just trying to get understand that. But it says the second death is the lake of fire. Okay, mm-hmm. well wait a minute now. Okay, they died once, just like we all die once. Then they go over right. there. We see the immortals 
are not going to die a second time. Right. Because we're going to be immortal. We're going to live forever. But those who are resurrected to mortality are going to have to endure a second death. Mm. See, this is why you're understanding the lake of fire is the second death. They already died once, like we all have to die. But you see, the wicked have to die a second time. So let's go ahead and read the last verse here. Verse 15, go ahead. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Okay, so it's a place that people are going to be thrown, is this lake of fire place. And it's, and it's, this, it's called the second death place. It's, it's called the lake of fire, the second death place. Okay, so now that we understand this, we're going to... And what I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to connect the dots with everyone to show you really what hell is all about, right? Okay, so let's go to Matthew chapter 5. This is the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is given this idea of hellfire. Let's see what he says about hell. Matthew 5, 29. Go ahead and read that one. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And for your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you had lose one of your members than your whole body go to, into hell. Okay, or that, that hell is actually Gehenna fire. Mm -hmm. It's hell fire. So twice he says, it's a place where your body is thrown. Okay, this is very clear here. He talks about the body will be thrown into this Gehenna fire Lake of fire, that's where your body's going to get thrown. Okay, that's what he says in verse 29. Verse right. 30, he kind of says something a little different. He says, it's better that you lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into this Guiana fire. Okay, so oh, wait a minute now. Okay, wait a minute. You're going to be thrown there. Okay, well, wait a minute. You're going to get resurrected at the Great White Throne Judgment. But now this, we know that this hellfire or this place called Lake of Fire it's called what? The second death. But at some point, we're going to get thrown into the lake of fire. But at least the wicked people. Were. Right. Okay, so this this is giving us some more clues here. It's a place where people are going to get thrown, at least eventually. Well, so they're going to have to live again and then be thrown in there after they live okay, again? Okay, this is why we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're looking at the clues that the Bible's giving us about this place. Right. Now, we're going to go to Mark. Now, Mark is like a parallel passage to this. So this is why I love these parallel passages because you get slightly different details in all this stuff. So let's go to Mark chapter 9, verses 43 through 48. Go ahead and read that one. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. Okay, so hell is described here is the unquenchable fire fire or this lake of fire we know it's the same place as lake of fire or gehenna fire it's all the same place okay but here's described as the unquenchable fire and if your foot causes you to sin cut it off it is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell and if your eye causes you to sin tear it out it is better for you to enter the kingdom of god with one eye than two eyes to be thrown into hell where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched Okay, so we get another another description of hell here. Right. Okay. See, it's, you got to look at all these little tiny clues. Every place in the Bible gives us little details about this place. And you just got to look at every one of them. Okay, so here the description is, it's a place where people are going to get thrown from previous places. We, you know, they get thrown there, right? And it's the place where the worm does not die and the fire does not go out unquenched. Right. Okay, so yeah, before it said unquenchable fire, it kind of gave that description earlier. Now it just kind of says it again, that it's it's this place where the worms are just going to be eating your body. Well, right. it kind of sounds yeah. like not <laughs> kind of gross, actually. Right. Well, it's kind of what happens. We think of people who are buried, or you know, the right. decomposing of as some of them maybe it, not in it, a, It's it's sounding a coffin, me like, but they're like your body's just going to be goes back to the earth, thrown back there. And you're, you're, it's going to be just eaten by a bunch of worms now. Yeah. Okay. Decomposing. And it's going to be essentially be being burned in fire. So we're getting all these clues about this place called hell. Right. Okay. Now we're going to go to Isaiah. See, Isaiah is 66, the very literally last chapter of Isaiah here. Okay. <laughs> he gives 
really the linchpin understanding of what this place held. Is. People don't ever read this. People don't even or they, they ignore it. Yeah. it. <laughs> but here we know that hell is this place where you're you're going to get thrown one day if you're a wicked person here. You're going to get thrown over there, but the worms are going to eat, eat in your bodies and you, and you, you're going to get burned. But so the idea it's, is it's not an unquenchable fire, but is it a burn like... This is why we're reading <laughs> Isaiah. Isaiah 66 is the clue yeah. that is going to keep help us understand what this place really is. Not what your, your pastors or preachers are telling you this place is. This is what the Bible actually states. For as the new heaven and the new earth, which I make, remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your seed and your name continue. And it shall come to pass from month to month and from Sabbath to Sabbath that all flesh shall come to worship me in Jerusalem, says the Lord. Okay, so here, people, it kind of sounds like, and this is, of course, from on New Earth here. So this Jerusalem is actually talking about New Jerusalem. Here. Right. Okay, so in other words, people are going to be coming, and this is kind of describes uh, the Revelation passage where people are going to be allowed into the city who and, and, and eat of the tree of life who have wash their robes mm. you know these are the people that you know hey they're coming to pay homage they screwed up but it looks it kind of sounds to me like now they have to you know pay their pay their penance pay their dues now is that a redeemable are they redeemed i i i'm just going by what this bible <laughs> says here you know like i say they're having to go to jerusalem pay penance for all this stuff right so it, it sounds to me like all flesh is going to have to travel. That's why the city's a massive city. Because people from all over the world now, at least New Earth, are having to travel there to essentially pay homage to God and, and, and to be uh, essentially be redeemed, to get mm -hmm. a healing from the nations and eat the tree of life. Mm -hmm. We're getting all these deep... But see, this doesn't sound like people are... Why are these people traveling there? It doesn't sound like they're burning in a lake of fire for all eternity, does it? Now, we're going to get to what this place, hell, is all, really all about here okay. in, this, in this next verse here. Because here these people are traveling from all over. So New Jerusalem is a large city. Yeah, it's so a huge city. It's a massive city. And people that are righteous are going to be let in. But the wicked, of course, are so, outside. And there's other land outside of New Jerusalem. Yeah, there has to be because people are traveling there mm -hmm. from all north, south, east, west. Because there's gates in all four sides. Right. And there's people coming from the north, people coming from the south, people coming from the east, people coming from the west. And they're all traveling there. Okay. These are the wicked people. The righteous people, we don't need to travel there. We're, we're, that, that's our home. Right? <laughs> right. That's our home base. We, we're, we're, that's our normal house. Right. Okay. That's why Jesus says in my father's house, there are many rooms. This is new Jerusalem folks. Right. Because this was, it, it, this new Jerusalem is a temple city. Exactly. They're coming to the temple folks and our temple, the temple is a huge city. Okay. So people are traveling there paying homage. Now this is what they got to do. Okay. Now we're going to re keep reading on here. Everyone's going to have to come. Worship the Lord at in Jerusalem now. Uh oh, we messed up the first time. Now we're going to have to go do this all over again. Keep coming back regularly to do all these normal things. Okay. Verse 24. Go ahead and read that one. And they shall go forth and see the carcasses of the men that have transgressed, transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, and their fire shall not be quenched, and they shall be a spectacle to all flesh. Okay, see, so now we're understanding what this lake of fire place is now. Okay, it's a place, it's like a mass grave. See, it's like on their way to traveling to New Jerusalem. Right. To pay homage, you're going to see this place. It's a place where all the, see, it's, again, it's just carcasses that are in there. See, it's not, this is why it's called the second death. As people over there are dying because they're mortals. Guess where their body is going to get thrown? They're going to get thrown over there into this lake of fire where it says the worm shall not die. Just like Mark says, Mark passes, Jesus stated this too. And their fire shall not be quenched. Because there's continuing bodies getting thrown in there of, of continuing mortals dying. So it's the destination that they have to look forward to, even if they go through all this washing of the robes. 
I don't know exactly, but this is here. It just says, you know, the carcass of the men who have transgressed against me. So again, they're they're the carcasses. They're they're not living people in hell, folks. This is the point I'm trying to make. This is why ninety nine percent of people don't understand. Hell isn't a place of torment where you're agony alive there. No, it's where your carcass is going to go. It's where your body is going to go, and that's why it's called the second death. Because the moment you die a second time, guess where your body's going? Mm. Over there on New Earth. So there's no hope for. It's going into a mass grave. <laughs> It's going to be getting eaten by worms, and it's going to be, b be getting burned. And guess what? People are going to be walking on, uh, be, be traveling on by, seeing all those bodies getting burned up. Seeing all those bodies getting eaten by worms, because the worms are, 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 are having a, a smorgasbord going But are, are they, they're not alive? They're, they're... They're dead. They're carcasses that are in there. Right. But I'm trying to figure out where's their spirits. They died a second time. Right? This is why it's called the second death. This is why this place, that so Lake is that of Fire, their final is, destination is this. I don't know what's going to happen after that. See, that's the we thing. don't know, right? If God's going to resurrect him a third, fourth, fifth time, we don't know any of that. Okay, where do we just know what the Bible states about the the destination of the wicked when they when they get when they they, do, they sin against it here? Guess what? Over there, their place is going to be in the Lake of Fire. When they die a second time, they're going to get their bodies thrown over there. And their bodies are going to be eaten by worms, and they're going to get burned up. And people, are, it's going to be a reminder for everybody saying, see what, what you do? This is what you're going to be like. You're going to be, worms are going to be munching on your flesh if you don't follow the Lord. You're, Why you're, don't you're people see that now? I don't get it. <laughs> this is what hell really is, folks. Okay, I'm trying to explain to you, this is biblical hell. The lake of fire is a place where the carcasses, a second time, where you're going to get resurrected. You're going to go over there, and it and basically that's where you're that's where you're going to, you're going to age, and you're going to die, right? And you're going to get thrown over there, and basically you're going to be lost. It's not really a place you want to go. I, already, people are panicked about dying once right now. <laughs> What you have to do is worry about that a second time if you go over there. No, it's better just to follow Christ now and get eternal life. And then you die here. Okay, then this is the last time. And then you're fine. You don't have to deal with the second death anymore. You don't have to deal with the lake of fire after your life is over on new earth. Because that's where the carcasses of all the dead bodies are. Right. That's where all the dead people go on new earth. Is a reminder, this is where the wicked go. See, that's what it, that, that's what it is. It, you know, think about that. You know, you have your, your kids, you're traveling there. You're looking over there at the carcasses of all those dead bodies and going, you know, that's going to be where you're going to go if you're disobedient to the Lord. It's kind of like we, you know, people go to different places for their attractions, their, you know, monuments or their, you know, um, interesting Certain places are known for their mountains or the Great Wall of China. Or thing. Well, New Jerusalem will be known on the outside as the place of burning fire and sulfur. <laughs> See, that's why it's, you know, as I was saying, it's not taught this way in most churches because people aren't really reading their Bibles, right. connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. I just connected the dots for you, showing you, no, no, the Gehenna fire, lake of fire, according to Jesus, is already talked about in Isaiah, and it's only full of dead corpses, dead bodies, Dead people, carcasses of the dead people who have transgressed against the Lord. They didn't want to follow the Lord. They didn't want to do his will. So guess what? They're, they, 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 they're, they're mortal, so they end up dying. And this is where their, their corpses went. Mm. God's not some heinous God is going to torture everybody for all eternity like most people are teaching. No, he's going to, you're going to go over there and then you're going to learn real quick. Oh boy, if, if I don't change my ways now, over there, yeah, I, I know. I got to endure life over here. I got to follow the old covenant system again. I got there's a bunch of crap you got to do over there now. You know, cut off your hand and enter life maimed. Right, right. Then because all the junk you're gonna have to go through over there, you don't have to you don't have to deal with any of that. Instead, you you could you could have eternal peace, joy, inheritance in New Jerusalem. Mm. All you gotta do is follow Christ. God isn't some heinous God that's gonna torture everybody for all eternity in some place called hell that most of these people are teaching. No, that's just where your corpse is going to go 
when you die a second time. Because <coughs> it's called the place of the second death. And that's where everybody goes over there of the of the mortals who die. Right. Their their place is gonna they're gonna have a part in that lake of fire where the worms will be eating your flesh and your 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 body will be be burning. And as more and more people die over there that are wicked, more and more, it's, it's, the fire is going to continue forever. So that's just the way it is. There's no hope for redemption. I didn't say that. <laughs> okay, I, I didn't say just, there's no hope for it. I'm just stating what the Bible actually teaches here. Well, it sounds like there is. So I'm just kind of like thinking, why would God resurrect them to another, you know, a, a, a mortal life if, they aren't given, and I don't know what that would mean, you know, everlasting life seems something that you'd be given because of your faithfulness and obedience to God in this life, but maybe they're given well, like I say, an everyone, opportunity. Honestly, to, you know, like the way I'm looking at this here is, is this, you know, not everyone's given the same opportunities in life that everybody else is. Right. Okay, this is why the judgment is going to be separate for every single person. Right. Not everyone's just going to be, okay, you're so evil, we're just going to... No, everyone's going to get a different punishment depending on what they've done. Like I say, most of human history, when the old covenant system was around, if you weren't living in Israel at the time, you didn't know God's laws. You were just living like everybody. And of course, God had you born to parents that were on the other side of the world. You yeah. had no choice over there on where you were born. So how is God going to judge you? Well, you didn't follow my law. Well, I didn't know your law. Right. I wasn't anywhere. See, this it's going to be different for every person. Now, you know, honestly, if if you're around in America or people today or the world today where there's churches around and you know the good news and you just are going to be are rebelling against it right now, which is the majority of people right now they're deceived. Right, they're yeah. Then you're going to be judged way more harshly right now because you were given an opportunity. You, yeah, you had this opportunity right. all the way through your life. Right. And you squandered it. Well, it's kind of like a lifeline. You did. You chose not to take it, when, even though you know you could have, and it was there all along, but you didn't want to because of your pride or your stubbornness or whatever. There's, flesh. there's churches in every... There, <laughs> there's God's people in every single country on earth right now. Right. I don't know of a single one. That you say, nope, there's not a single person... A believer over on that on on in that country. No, every country has them. This is why everyone today we're in a day and age where is without excuse. Right. It's not like oh well, Lord, I didn't know. No, yeah, there were the word of God is around. Everyone know to, knew about it. You just chose to reject it. Right. Now it's like I say, judgment is going to be different for every single person. I'm just trying to put it out there. You know, right now, you know your corpse right now when you die, your corpse is going in a grave. You know, people might have a nice funeral for you or whatever. But in the second time, no, you're just going to be thrown into a mass grave. Better to follow the Lord now than to end up in that place a second time. Right. That's why it's called a second death. It, you're dying a second time. Bad enough having to worry about death one time that we have to do today. But now, guess what? You got to worry about death again. Okay. And I don't know what's going to happen over there. What the covenant's like over there? Because it sounds to me like there's going to be a different kind of covenant system. A much more stringent one than the one we have. We got an easy one. Right. Christ already took care of our covenant system over here. Real right. easy. The one we're following. We get eternal life if we follow Christ. And we don't have to pay homage to Jerusalem or do anything like that. Over there, it kind of sounds like people have to go to Jerusalem regularly. So it sounds like it's kind of a hassle. Kind of a bother. Okay? To follow the covenant system over there. But that's what people are going to have to do. The ones that rebelled against the Lord. Right. It, over here. I'm just putting things out there. We, we just better just to follow the Lord now and just do what God wants us to do. And we don't have to worry about any of this stuff. Because we live in a very dark, deceptive age. We know this. We must be vigilant. We must be manly. We must be fortified. Standing firm in the faith. Doing everything out of love. Not only because it's biblical. But because it glorifies God. Join or contact us at satanslowseason.org. This is a non-copyright Living in Satan's Low Season production.